blessing. We'll have a testimony and a song, and then we'll have the preach word. Give Lord another hand for the ball. Hallelujah.
to the Lord Jesus Christ for being the head of my life, giving honor to the bishop for being the shepherd of my life, giving honor to you all for being our life, precious faith, precious God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace, we thank you for your loving kindness, we thank you for your multitude, Lord, of tender mercies, we ask that the spirit of the Lord will continue, Lord Jesus, to lead us and guide us, Lord, in the pathway of righteousness, Lord Jesus. We know that we stand not as we are, but we thank you, Lord, for your keeping power. We thank you because when we were yet, Lord, in our sin, Lord, you died for us. And for that, we just want to say thank you for being God all by yourself, for the long suffering of God that has been accounted, Lord, for us, Lord, for salvation. Help us to live right, Lord, that we may live. And let the meditations of our hearts, Lord, even the words of our mouth, Lord, be acceptable. Lord, and to you in Jesus' name, let you just say amen. amen. I won't be before you long, just a short word of exhortation, uh, just to talk about preparation. Preparation in um, the life that we live. The Bible talks about Strive to enter in at the straight gate. It's a because many will seek to enter in, but they will not be able. Because of the of the life that that they have lived. He say in that day when the when the God calls his elect and the door is shut, they will begin to knock on the door and they say, Open for us. And then he gonna come and say, who are you? And they gonna say, Lord, it's us. You know, we, we preached in the streets. We did took care of God's business. And he will say, I never knew you. Depart from me because you are a worker of iniquity. Because in your everyday living, you were not preparing to meet God. And, you know, a lot of times, like when you can go to uh, when you go to like an interview, uh, uh, it helps to know a little bit about the the job and the company you're seeking for. You go in and you start telling them, listen, I've been following, I've been known, I've known about you for a very long time. And uh, I have followed and have seen the accomplishments and this thing that you have done. And also I know that certain things that I can contribute. It does help in your interview. Not going to God, going to... Meet God. A lot of people just in their in their uh, in just in their talking. Sometimes people will just make the statement like I'm ready to meet my maker, but they don't understand the weight of what they are talking about. Yeah. Because when you go to heaven, you want to be able to say, I've been looking forward to being here all this time that I have lived safe my whole life since I've you know I got to know Jesus. My everyday living, I have been striving. I have been striving for this moment, Lord, to be with you. Amen. I have been striving. I have been striving to live by, by your grace and your mercy. I have been looking forward to being with the Lord in my everyday living and striving to do that which is right and that which is pleasing unto the Lord is preparing me. To meet God. But if you're, if you're living unsaved, unrighteously, it will show in your everyday living that your preparation is not to meet God, but it's hellfire. Because it will show in the life that we have, we have lived. Amen? Amen? In the book of Luke chapter 16...
Now Luke chapter 12, around verse 47. Verse 43, it says, Blessed Oh, verse 42 it says, And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is thy servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But, and if that servant say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and to drink and be drunken, the Lord of the servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. That's what, you know, in Galatians, it said, don't get weary of doing that which is right, because in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We have to be able to endure until the end. Amen. Verse 47, and the servant which knew his Lord's will, those who have come to know truth and have come to know, have knowledge of the living God and have known the Lord's will and prepared not himself. In your everyday living, you know God's will, but you did not prepare yourself in doing that which is right, in doing that which is pleasing in this in the sight of the Lord, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few stripes, for unto whomsoever much is given, or him shall much be required, and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. It's important that in our everyday living that we examine ourselves to be sure that we'll be in the faith. Because again, you know, your everyday living will determine whether you're preparing to be with the Lord. Paul put it this way. He said, he said in a great house, there are vessels of honor and some vessels of dishonor. And now he said, if a man purge himself from this thing, he shall be a vessel unto honor. If you correct their ways, if you seek the Lord and purge yourself from your wicked ways and ask the Lord to lead and guide you, you shall be a vessel of honor prepared unto good works. Prepared unto good works. Now, preparation is also an attribute of God. See, when God formed man from the dust of the earth. God, the Bible says that God planted a garden eastward. He already had prepared a place where he was going to put men to separate him from the world. So preparation, there's nothing wrong with preparation. Preparation is important because preparation is actually shows an attribute of faith. It shows an attribute of faith. You see like uh, Noah, Noah moved with fear, prepared the ark to the saving of his house. Through, through faith, he built the ark and prepared the ark for the saving of, of his house because he feared for the rain which he had not seen. He had not seen the rain, but being moved with fear and with faith, he built the ark to save, and he was able to save his house. Amen? Now, when, when Jonah... When Jonah was running from the call of God and he went into a boat, the Bible says that, well, you know, the boat began to sink and the people kept asking, like, you know, what is going on? And when they got to Jonah, Jonah said, you know, throw me over. Throw me over because if you don't, you know, the storm is not going to stop. And when they threw him over, the Bible says that God had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah and he was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. Now, when we when we think about that story, how God had prepared a great fish, is to tell us that when the Lord's will needs to be done, God will make sure that everything along the way, that all the bases have been covered. Amen. And and sometimes we we do that. We you know we get we get a call from God, and, and we 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 begin. We want to 
uh, believe not every spirit, but to try to see if it be of God. But see, God got it covered. So you try it this way, and you find out, boom, it's done. Then you're like, hold on, I still, I just still want to make sure. Then you try it this way, and then you find God already got it covered. Amen? Like Moses, when he, God came to him and he said, you got to go to, you got to, go to Egypt, amen, and talk to Pharaoh and tell him that I am that I am, say, let my people go. He tried to make excuses. You know, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. Oh, my, there's something wrong with my speech. And God said, hey, listen, your brother Aaron, he's able to talk. And actually, he is on his way to meet you. Because God had already prepared. Amen. God had already prepared, amen, for the way before his will to be sure that there was nothing that was left uncovered. Even in your everyday living. That's what I say. Sometimes we, 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 we hear and, and, and sometimes we, we just want to be sure. And each way when we try, if it be the Lord's will, believe me, God's will will take place. And no matter how many times we try to, to find a reason, we can't find no reason. Because being an all-knowing God, he's going to make sure that all the bases are covered. That there will be no question, no stone left unturned. Amen. Even with Gideon, Bishop talked about it this morning. He said, if I, if I am a mighty man of valor, why am I hiding my food? And they had to convince him that he was a mighty man of valor. So when he went to the enemy's camp, he heard him talking about the dream. God will make sure, amen, that all, no stone left unturned. He's going to make sure that everything has been prepared for you to be sure that you, you have no reason to say there was a reason why I couldn't do God's will. He said that it's not God's will that any man perish, that I will all come unto repentance, so that we can't blame God because we have to just not just look at ourselves and understand it's the decisions that we have we have made along the way. Amen. Amen. Um, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25, verse 34. Oh, no, verse 32 says, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from the other, as a sheep divided his sheep from the, from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. God has already prepared. Amen. He said, he said, don't be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said that in my father's house, there are many mansions. If he were not so, I would not have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, thou you may be also. God has already gone to prepare a place for us. And because he's gone to prepare a place for us, he will come back for us so that where he is, we may be as well. Amen. He shall say, on the right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom which was pre has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when say we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw, saw the sick or in prison and came unto thee, and the king shall answer and say unto them, 
Verily I say unto you, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed, cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. But because men love darkness rather than light, he said that hell has enlarged her borders. Men are going into it. Men are going into it. These things have already been prepared from the foundation of the world. So you got to choose which path or direction you want to go to in preparing your everyday living. It does show which direction you're trying to go. And I want to tie that in with, uh, we talked about having faith. When Elijah uh, prayed for the rain, amen, in Israel, and he went and he got on his knees and he prayed and he sent the servant and the servant came back and said, I don't see anything. And he kept sending the servant. And then the servant returned the seventh time. And he said, all I see is a cloud the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, now go tell Ahab, prepare his chariot that the rain stop be not. He told him to prepare because of the, he saw, an, even though he saw the cloud the size of a man's hand, Amen. He knew that there was going to be an abundance of rain. So in your everyday living, in your preparation and having faith in God as we're asking God for different blessings, God will also try to see are we preparing for what's to come. Are we preparing for what's to come? So that when the blessing comes, we're not sitting there like we don't know what to do with the blessing. And a lot of times, we don't people don't get blessed because they don't have, they don't show forth uh, uh, faith in what they're seeking for. You ask God for a, uh, for some work, and then you don't prepare to figure out when the work comes how you're going to get there. Amen. I remember when you know growing up. And, and, and you would, uh, different people, you know, just in the neighborhood sometimes, when um, uh, uh, families will look at their children and see just in their different attributes, in the things that they were doing, whether or not they were ready for marriage. And sometimes when they will bring it up, somebody will come and say, you know, some, you know uh, uh, somebody was trying to uh, find out about your daughter for marriage. Say, oh no, her, uh-uh. Because they can see that they, in their everyday uh uh, characteristics they were not preparing for marriage because they were not doing the things that they are supposed to be doing and sometimes they used to do that with the sometimes we were with the young men and say how can you want to get married but I, you, I don't see you do anything because what are you going to do with the wife because they can see that they don't they're not showing that they are preparing for the next step amen so you got to tie that in your preparation with faith Faith, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. See, Noah went and built the ark. Amen. And he did it because of the word, but he had not seen rain. Didn't know what rain would look like. But the move with fear and through faith, he built the ark in preparation. Amen. In preparation, you show forth, amen, faith. By your works. The Lord, I'm preparing. I'm preparing. Elijah saw the, the cloud as the size of a man's hand. He said, you know, tell Ahab, get it down, prepare the chariots because there's going to be an abundance of rain. He said, get it down, let the rain overtake you not. Go ahead and go because when the rain comes, it's going to overtake you. And I want you to be prepared for the blessing that is about to come. Amen. John saw in a vision, he said, the holy city, Jerusalem, the new city, Jerusalem. He said, coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He said, it was beautiful. I saw it. 
it would look like a bride adorned for her husband. Amen. And you tell, you know, get ready so that you can inherit the kingdom that I have prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Preparation is important. God has prepared it for you and I. And it's up to you in your everyday living, in your everyday life, to show forth that you're preparing to be there. You're, the life that you live will determine whether or not in your everyday living, you're preparing, you're preparing, amen, to live with Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Jesus' name, he is a mystery.